As college campuses face what many describe as a mental health crisis, a growing number of universities and colleges are providing more resources to better support their students. But a new study finds there are some glaring disparities among trans and non-binary students when it comes to mental health. Christina Quinn has more. When Mason Dunn was a college freshman, he heard the term transgender for the first time. And so when I came out, there was this moment of finding a term that worked for me, that finally captured my struggle with gender, my struggle with gender identity and gender expression. He was assigned female at birth, but as a teen struggling with his gender identity, hearing the term transgender opened up a new world for him. And so it was a really amazing experience, uh, but it was also challenging. Finding a therapist as a college student who could help him navigate his gender identity was difficult, especially in the early 2000s when the trans population was less visible. Now Dunn identifies as non-binary trans masculine. And that for me means that although my gender expression is masculine uh, and people read me as masculine, uh, I don't identify as a man, I don't identify as male, uh, I am me. Transmasculine is among the growing spectrum of gender non-conforming identities, meaning they don't identify as male or female. For instance, Facebook now allows users to choose from over 70 gender identities. But a major public health study from Boston University shows how hard it is for people who clash with traditional gender categories. So we're looking at depression, symptoms, anxiety, um, eating disorders, non-suicidal self-injury, suicidal ideation. Sarah Ketchin Lipson led the study, which surveyed over 65,000 students across 71 colleges and universities nationwide, asking about their gender identity and mental health. Only 2% self-identified as transgender or non-binary. But within that population... The magnitude of these disparities was enormous. The study found gender non-conforming students were four times more likely to experience mental health problems than their peers who identify with the sex they were born with. And as Mason Dunn puts it, finding a counselor who gets it can be daunting. Whether it's uh, helping with uh, anxiety or depression or uh, PTSD or any other things that somebody might be seeking care for, oftentimes those things are put on the back burner and you have to wade through the discussion of gender identity and gender expression first. And it, quite frankly, is exhausting. According to the Campus Pride Trans Policy Clearinghouse, 88 colleges and universities nationwide provide transition-related medical expenses. Nearly 270 campuses provide gender-inclusive housing. 21 of them are in Massachusetts, including BU, UMass Amherst and Lowell, and Emerson College. We do have to do something for particularly the youth who are dealing with suicidality, with anxiety and depression, and so many other really concerning uh, aspects. But we also have to raise the narrative that there are trans folks out there who are succeeding, who are surviving, who are thriving in today's world. Christina Quinn joins me now. Hi, Christina. Hi, Jim. How are you? So what's next? BU has the data. What are they going to do with it? Well, they're going to look into the why. So, you know, why is there such a huge disparity between the mental health problems of non-binary students versus the rest of the student population? You know, how much of it is environmental um, and other factors that they want to, they just want to look into it more deeply. You know, obviously you've made clear college campuses are scrambling to find mental health resources for all the kids they're responsible mm -hmm. for. You mentioned, I think it was 88 that are covering trans-related medical expenses. What are the mm -hmm. rest doing? Well, that's a good question. I mean, there was a, a study that came out in August uh, from the American Council of Education. They surveyed 1,700 universities and colleges nationwide. And as it turns out, college pres university presidents have been investing a lot more money into mental health resources. Just In general? In general. Um, they're just spending a lot more money. And so it looks like that there is there, you know, there's just a greater interest in providing more resources. I also know that there are colleges that are lo looking towards telehealth because there's also just a shortage of, of counselors just all around. And so there are a number of ways to provide more support. As for the transgender, non-binary yeah. population, uh, colleges, I mean, local colleges, for example, the ones mentioned in the story, I know Boston College, Tufts University, they have counselors that are, you know, specifically geared towards this population. So, but is the feeling the rest will get on board, even if it's a rocky road to get there? It's really unclear. I mean, 88 schools, if you think about it, it's a, it's a small, Dropping I mean, bucket, out of 4,000 yeah. colleges and universities nationwide, that's not a lot. So, I mean, we'll just have to wait and see. Here's hoping there are more. Nice to see you. Good to see you, too.